Hello everybody, Chip Walton. This is a Chop and Brew Lanyap tasting note on a very, very special beer. I'm joined by two good buddies. Jay Keeler. Michael Dawson. Michael Dawson is the man who brings this very special beer to the table. Dawson, tell us about it. I was just the steward of this beer. It really belongs to all of us. It was sent to us in early 2012 by a very good friend who followed a podcast. <laughs> Enough said. <laughs> yep. I've held it in trust until such time as we could all taste it, yep. and that night has finally arrived. This is West Veteran 12 from the Abbey of St. Sixtus. Cheers. Cheers, Cheers, guys. And this was purchased by he who will go unspoken at the brewery and passed along to you, right? As far as I know, this we got this beer before it was available in the States. A lot of people have been aware of this since the six packs that the Abbey released are going for 600 bucks on eBay right now. <laughs> Which was an unprecedented move by the brewery to release these publicly. Normally, um, they would sell their beers on a lottery system. You'd have to call in via phone, give them your license plate, show up at the brewery, and you could only purchase a certain amount at a certain time. Definitely, uh, they have a very small amount of beer that they make. At the at the at the monastery, they're labeled by number. Um, there's an eight, there's a ten, there's a twelve, and a few others, I believe. There's a six. A six. So this is the number twelve, which normally comes with a yellow cap on the bottle. It's about ten point five ABV. If you do the research about the beer; it'll say that it has uh, some earthy and rummy sort of notes to it, which I definitely yeah. pick up right away. And also it's known for its aggressive hop bitterness, which is maybe something that you wouldn't expect. First thing on the nose, I'm getting just like rising yeast, like mm -hmm. sourdough that's not yet bread, <laughs> that's still in a bowl doing its thing. There's a lot of fruit esters and alcohol aromatics too, like yeah. just, just about any dark fruit you could think to name. Yeah. You can smell in here. Grapes, prunes, plums. Um, those are all the dark fruits I can think to name. <laughs> yeah, man. You know, Cherries. Plus, yeah, it's like a fruit basket, but the basket is made out of bread. It's very malty, very rich. And it's especially amazing to think that this beer, according to Michael Jackson's Great Beers of Belgium, third edition, is just made from pale malt, candy sugar, northern brewer hops and the house yeast. Now, probably something the, the more significant part of this beer for beer geeks and beer enthusiasts out there is that this beer consistently shows up at the top of best of lists mm -hmm. of beers around the world. Um, and it's also one of the most scarce beers. It's the hardest beer to, to pr procure. So, which of course now not isn't necessarily the, the case with them releasing it commercially, although it is in limited quantity. Mm -hmm. So. What do you think, you guys? Does it live up to the hype? It is a beautiful beer. I'm going to dodge the question and comment on the legs of the beer. Like that, it does not taste boozy, but that 10.5% right. that ABV is betrayed by just how much the glass is coated. Yeah. And the beer just oozes back down the bowl. Is this considered a double, a quad? Is it beyond definition? It's a Belgian strong dark ale, but I, I really think it's kind of a beast onto itself because of what Jake said about the scarcity, its cult status. It's uh, it's obviously got a lot of baggage coming into a tasting like this. Mm. This is my first time tasting any beer from West Vleteren, so it, it's been built up a lot. I've read about it a ton. I've brewed beers inspired by this this ingredient bill. I think it's a really beautiful beer. Like you can taste the craftsmanship. It's really well made. Um, kind of begs the question: How much is a beer worth? Mm -hmm. These were expensive six packs by any stretch of the imagination when they were introduced in the states. Mm -hmm. But it was going for a cause. The beer was released in the states by the Abbey to fund some building repairs for their ground. Right. Mm -hmm. None of that eBay money is going to right. the Abbey. <laughs> My knee-jerk reaction is that it's a good beer, it's a great beer, 
if you didn't tell me where it came from, you know, and didn't tell me the history of the beer, the significance of the beer, I'd say, oh, it's a great Belgian strong dark ale, yeah. uh, really good, uh, 10 and a half percent, crazy, can't detect that alcohol content, mm -hmm. really clean, dry finish, but enough body and meat up front where mm -hmm. it doesn't feel really dry, but hard to say if I put this beer against, you know, 10, of, 10 other beers that I hold very highly, yeah. that this would come out as number one. Mm -hmm. So um, it begs the question, how much does scarcity mythology, if you will, play mm -hmm. into the status of a beer? What's the opposite end of like, would you drink local just because it's local if it's also not great beer oh, absolutely. you just want to support your local guys just for the sake of it it's also like would you drink slash love the beer on the number one top mm -hmm. beer list that with all the like you know legendary and all that behind it and absolutely you know, it sounds like you drink most beers you'll drink anything i'll drink anything give, it to, give it to give mikey, it to mikey. He'll <laughs> drink anything um but it, no you go ahead well i we were talking about this before we started shooting to me Wes Vleteren and the beers that they've made, it's sort of a uh, a model built out of a completely different tradition and history that has kind of become a contemporary model for mm -hmm. the way we talk about beers, the way that we trade beers, the way that we rank beers, and the way we assess them. It's not so much on the beer itself, it's it's as much about yeah. you know the availability, the the story behind the brewery, and just the public perception yeah. how much that plays mm -hmm. into it and I think the same thing like any beer like even from like a Surly Darkness to a Pliny the Elder to whatever it might be yep. these limited edition beers that get so hyped up that are probably good beers they're probably great beers but how much of that is perception versus actual a quantifiable you know judgment of the beer so to speak Jake has pondered I've pondered. He's pondered. I'm curious what you guys think. Yeah. I'd like to know what you think. Have you tried Westy 12? And if you have, what are your impressions? Or what's another beer you put in that kind of box mm -hmm. with un untouchable beers, you know, the mystery, the ghost beer, you know, what a, what do you think the world's best ghost beer is? As it warms up, some more of those earthy notes come out. Hmm. A little woody. Yeah, there's a little woody quality, foresty, a bourbony character. Mhm. Mm a little bit, a little bit as it warms up, a little bit of a, a vanilla character mm -hmm. too. A little oak. A beer, obviously. Well, it's ten and a half percent, so <laughs> no matter what your opinion is about it, it's a beer that's meant to be appreciated slowly mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and deliberately. Mhm. Mm I didn't know we were supposed to save some to see what it was like warm. <laughs> How are you supposed to drink this slow? <laughs> the beer drank good. The beer drank pretty good. It drank pretty good. The most rewarding thing about finally getting to try this beer, for me personally, was getting to do it with you guys. Aww. Aww. Yeah. Aww. And sharing it with all of you. Yeah. <laughs> Cheers to that. Cheers to that. My choppas and brewers. Chop for chop. Brew, brew for brew. brew. That's not gonna, it's not gonna stick, is it? What's wrong with the Belgians we got? We got the Modit. We got the Fiend du Monde. There's a new Belgium? <laughs>